lines. So um, when it comes to SPF strength, um, about 30 SPF protects about 97% of the sun rays. Um, so it protects 97% of from sun damage in the sun rays. And the, um, about 50%, uh, 50 SPF actually protects about 98%. Now I know it's a 1% difference, um, but I would rather people use S at least SPF 50 and nothing really above that because there's no point. Um, as you'll read from a lot of articles from dermatologists and research, they say that above SPF 50, the increase in protection against the sun doesn't really increase so like significantly or noticeably that anything above SPF 50 would provide you like a lot more effective like you know protection against the sun. So SPF 50 is actually the best, I think, the perfect SPF protection level. Um, the reason I always tell people to use SPF 50 versus 30 is because um, when people test for SPF, they usually um, test applying about two millimeter thickness of the actual sunscreen. So, but in reality, most people only probably put on a, about a third of that thickness, meaning even if you're applying SPF 50, you're probably not getting a full 50 SPF coverage and protection. So I would say that even when you're choosing the higher option, the SPF 50, even that extra 1%, no, knowing that people don't apply as thick of a coat, um, I think it's a safer um, protection level to apply on your skin, given that whole um, tendency that people don't apply as much. Also, um, you always need to make sure broad spectrum coverage. Broad spectrum coverage covers and protects you from both UVA and UVB. So UVB is probably the ones that you notice that's giving you the sunburns. But UVA is the one that actually could go through glass, like it could go through, it could penetrate through anything. So that actually hits and um, damages more of the um, deep um, basal cells and damages the basal cells, skin cells. So that's actually really bad as well. Um, both of them could cause cancer. Um, also, um, I just got a re, I guess I just got a question. It says how. Do you reapply um, sunblock on makeup? Mm -hmm. Some products on um, face with makeup on? Um, I usually, so the thing about this is that um, I usually like to apply SPF separately on top of, even if my um, foundation or whatever says that it has, or moisturizer says that it has SPF, because um, when you apply, if things that are not intended solely for SPF, you're pretty much only applying probably one tenth of the actual um, amount that it's tested for. So even though like a, a foundation may say like a SPF 30, you're maybe achieving probably receiving about like SPF 5 protection because um, nobody, you, in order to get the full SPF 30 that they say that's inside the, um, the makeup, you have to probably coat on like at least like this much thickness and nobody puts on like that much foundation. So I always tell people, do not get fooled by whatever SPF it says on the, on the makeup or the foundation, because in reality, the, because of how much um, of that product you're actually applying on your face, you're not achieving all 30 SPF. You're achieving probably like five SPF of that. Um, so I would say that always apply um, sunblock separately from makeup. So even if you're wearing foundation, um, try to use, um, like a foundation and then also put on um, SPF or like I just I just really really encourage everybody that I know that it might like slightly get in the way and I also for your face I really recommend um, cream or lotion types and I know it's really annoying because if you want to reapply it you have makeup on you might but it's really worth it and it's important and the reason I still recommend over spray or any other types of um, application forms I have I really strongly recommend cream types mainly because you really know that you're getting it on there and it's evenly lathering on so you're getting you're getting consistent and even protection all throughout your face so I really um, recommend that you still try to reapply on top of your makeup I know it's a little bit annoying but please try to reapply using some kind of cream or lotion type and there's really no way to really get around the whole concept of like um, how do I do it without messing up my makeup. Um, if you want the best kind of protection and, and like the short protection, you're gonna have to use like a cream or a lotion to really make sure that all lathers on evenly. 
and that's going to get in the way of your makeup. But usually most, um, a lot of um, sunscreens nowadays, they're formulated very light, even though they're mineral-based, and the mineral-based ones work right away. And those are great because um, they're usually lighter. So they don't really do that, like, a, you don't really, really have to, like, lather it in as much and rub it in. So it won't really mess up your makeup as much when you're using these new formulas that are out there. And also, how often do you reapply sunscreen? It really depends. I know there's a lot of sunscreens that are formulated to be waterproof. Um, those are supposed to be a lot more stubborn and stay on longer and more resistant to sweat and um, water. But um, in most case scenarios, like um, my dermatologist, every time I go, because I have very sensitive skin, he always tells me to apply at least four to six hours. And in the summertime, when I'm sweating and I'm out and about on the beach or on my runs, I actually carry a little bottle of um, sunblock in my little running pouch. So I always try to apply it, because um, when you wipe away stuff, that's also wiping away protection, because whatever was on your face, you're wiping it off. So I try to really reapply um, as, de um, as frequently as possible, especially when I'm sweating a lot. So in the summertime, I say when I'm outdoors and I'm just walking and I'm constantly in a sweating situation, I probably reapply like every two hours. Also, um, how do I feel about chemical versus mineral sunscreen? Um, I prefer... I prefer uh, mineral sunscreens, mainly because um, chemical sunscreens are really not the most ideal for really sensitive skin types because it actually has to physically absorb into your skin and because of that fact, and it's a synthetic man-made chemical and it's absorbing straight into your skin to actually start working to protect, it could cause a lot of skin reactions and people usually get a lot of irritations from this. So if you ha are the type of person who has sensitive skin or gets a lot of reactions easily, I would not suggest chemical um, sunscreens. Um, I would suggest mineral sunscreens that use titanium dioxide or zinc oxide. Um, I know that the misconception is that a lot of people are hesitant. Sorry if I'm looking both ways. I have um, one for Facebook Live and Instagram going on at the same time, so I'm trying to give equal attention to both. Um, because, well, mineral sunscreens, first of all, works right away. You don't need to wait after you put it on about like 20 to 30 minutes like chemical sunscreens. You can just wear it and then just step out and it'll start um, really blocking those rays right away. And also chemical sunscreens, a lot of them, um, mineral sunscreens, a lot of them nowadays are formulated so that they don't have that white residue. So you really don't have to worry about like it not absorbing and clean and um, without that uh, right white cast. So depending on like the brand and their formula technology and the capabilities, a lot of the mineral sunscreens nowadays um, really absorb clean, fresh, and light. And they also don't have that heavy feeling a lot of people think about. Like, cause when people think about mineral sunscreens, they usually think about the things that like the Olympic beach volleyballs wear, like players wear, like, you know, that's like giving you that full on like, um, Whole, like white like nose <laughs> but that's not true anymore it really like nowadays the chem uh, mineral sunscreens are made so that they're formulated to absorb nice clean fresh no greasy no clogging and so it all depends on you finding that um, brand that does that and um, of course um, the one that we have at Sephora Neogen Dermology Daylight Protection Sunscreen that one actually is one of those um, great mineral sunscreens that have that great technology applied where when you put it on, it absorbs clean and fresh, no white cast. It's it's just like hydrating, it almost feels like a moisturizer than an actual like you have sunscreen on. Because the thing about sunscreens is that you know you're wearing sunscreen. Also, um, I have some other stuff. The Bayla, uh, the daylight protection sunscreen. Is it okay for oily skin types, or um, or what does it say? Or oil free SPF work better? Okay, so the thing about um. The thing about um, the daylight protection sunscreen, it's ideal for even oily skin because as I said, the formula technology applied in it, even though it's using a mineral-based sun blocker ingredient like titanium dioxide, it is formulated so that it's really clean and it doesn't like trap, like clog those pores. It's, it's still very light. So the problem with those other mineral-based sunscreens that leave those white casts, those are probably formulated so that they really just create like this heavy coat over your skin and that's why people break out from it and that's why people um, with oily skin tend to get acne or have like overproduction of oil because um, the 
the uh, formula itself is just creating like this unbreathable barrier. But with the daylight protection sunscreen, it also has a lot of moisture, moisturizing and hydrating ingredients mixed in with SPF. So it gives that fresh, clean feeling um, to keep your skin like not oily and um, also prevent breakouts. Um, so it's, I think it's an ideal product for the oily skin types. Also, there's a Code 9, um, the UV Defense Long Lasting Protector. That's a water-based, so this is also even ideal, even more ideal for um, oily skin types because it's a water-based system. So um, even when you put it on, it feels like it's just like water. Like you, you can actually feel the watery um, texture. Um, so that's really great for oily skin types as well. Also, um, I got, I previously had some questions about the um, peels, the wine peels. Um, so, oh, suggestion for, okay, so we're getting a lot of like other um, questions too. So I got a question for, about the exfoliators for um, sensitive, uh, oh, skins with rosacea. Um, so rosacea is like very, very tricky because it's, um, it's pretty much an inflammation of the skin and it could be triggered by various things. Some people have it just like naturally, it's just prone to like having rosacea. Um, I would try to use exfoliators that won't be, um, will, that won't like really start irritating my skin. So we have like the Reapy, the Real Calming Herb. That actually has real, um, the masks, the Biofresh masks from Reapy, those actually have calming ingre herbal ingredients in it. So what it does is, um, and it also has flakes of real hand crushed herbs inside it, and it's a clay base. So what it, ha what, what it does is it calms your skin down while like when you rub it in, the, the real like um, small herb, hand crushed herbs, give a gentle exfoliating effect. And I've actually had um, consumers with um, rosacea like write to me and tell me that I have rosacea and this has really helped like bring down the redness in my skin and also it gives that really nice gentle exfoliation effect um, in a natural way and so they've really enjoyed it. Um, exfoliation, it really depends on how you want to go about it. Some people like who have stronger skin that's not as sensitive, they can go with like the stronger acids um, contain like ingredients that are uh, products to um, get rid of like dead skin cells, but um, you don't always have to do it like that, and especially if you have sensitive skin. It's more about, you can use the more subtle ones that take a longer time, but they'll subtly and gradually um, get rid of the dead skin cells, um, like the Biofresh mask. Also, um, what type of sunscreen is good for the body? Um, it depends on what your activities are like throughout the day. If you tend to go be outdoors a lot, and um, you're the type of person who enjoys like, um, part of your every day is spending a lot of time sweating outdoors. Um, I would uh, definitely get a more water, like a sports um, performance type um, sunblock because you sweat a lot, that means it's almost like water's running down. So you're kind of, your SPF is kind of like rubbing off and rinsing off of your skin. So it really depends on, um, most people I feel that if they are mostly indoors, but still when you're indoors, you're getting the SPF. So you're actually still getting sun damage. Um, there, I've heard of people who actually had, you know, they got skin cancer even when like they're not the type of people who are outdoors often. But that's because everywhere we are, um, the UV rays and UV, like B rays and A rays, they just penetrate through the, um, through the windows and everything. So you're still getting exposed. So, but depending on uh, what kind of, like how much you sweat and what kind of activities you do every day and most of the day, um, it depends like uh, people who are more outdoorsy and sporty and sweat a lot outside, I would get more of a sports a performance um, sunscreen. And those are formulated to stay on and they're, they're more stubborn and they'll stay on longer even through sweat and water. Um, now, if you just work indoors mainly and you want good protection, then I would suggest anything like SPF 50 um, that doesn't make your skin feel greasy. Because I know people even um, break out from heavier like greasy formulas um, from the normal sunscreen. So, um, I think I personally, I use the daylight protection sunscreen on my face and my body. So, and I really enjoy it. I don't like my skin breaking out because my overall, my skin everywhere is very sensitive. So for the sensitive skin types, I would suggest like try to use um, products that are even ideal for your face because usually those are formulated to be more gentle because your skin on your face is thinner. So therefore um, formulas made for your face is going to be made to be more gentle on your skin. Also, um, 
She said, um, you, somebody was asking me which exfoliating products for redness. Um, I was saying the Repeat BioFresh Mask with Real Calming Herbs. That's a great uh, mask to calm your skin down. So the clay actually does a lot of detoxing benefits in it, um, as well as um, the herbs inside the, inside the formula and the hand crushed herbs. While you rub it on, it not only calms your skin, but it's gonna exfoliate like very gently, like a very mild, like subtle exfoliation um, effect. And also another one that's good is the, um, for rosacea, I feel that the VP, the Tony pads, the organic cotton treatment Tony pads, those are great because they're 100% cotton, which cotton is supposed to be the most breathable and hypoallergenic fabric. Uh, one of the fabrics we've been using for the longest time in human civilization. So um, these organic cotton pads are drenched in like um, an ingredient with like all calming natural ingredients like chamomile, um, calendula, and things like that to uh, calm and also help tone your skin to a perfect balance while it helps like bring inflammation down and calm it down. So those are great because um, there's dual textures on the pads. So one side, you can get a gentle exfoliation that's not like not aggressive at all. And then, um, but you can still like subtly every day use it to eliminate like little bits of um, dead skin cells. And so that's another great product. That was a repeat cotton treatment toning pads and the repeat um, BioFresh calming herbs with calming herbs. Um, so spray type sunscreen, is it okay for the face for reapplication. Um, spray type sunscreens are great, especially if you are the type, when you're out on the beach and you don't want to have to touch yourself when you're like sweaty or you have sand on you. But personally, and I think a lot of um, dermatologists and professionals would um, also agree with me on this, with spray types, you never could guarantee the consistency. So like the, if I spray it, like, I don't know, I might have missed this part, you just never can tell. When you're lathering stuff on your skin, you know that you're like lathering it on until like the white, like, you know, the, you see that the product is fully absorbed and you're physically, you're, you're touching all those spots on your body and your skin. So you know that it's reaching all those parts. But with the spray, really, you don't know how much, if you miss the spot, also, if you got to very slightly sprayed on here and but then you got like a whole bunch sprayed here, it's just not really um, consistent. So spray types could be convenient, but it's not gonna guarantee like um, a full absorption and um, even distribution. It's very inconsistent. So I still recommend, I know it's annoying, but I still recommend people to apply lotion or cream types for sunscreens on their bodies just to ensure perfect coverage. That you got it, you got every every little part of your skin covered. And also, um, I talked about SPF now, but um, so when I talked about briefly about the mineral base versus the chemical base and what's ideal for you, but um, and briefly people ask me questions about the spray, the stick, the lotions. Um, oh, I just got another question. What is the best type of sun product for dry skin? For dry skin, I would um, I would look for nowadays a lot of um, sunscreens are made so that not only are they, I mean their main intended purpose is to um, to block the sun. But a lot of them now additionally um, add ingredients that are hydrating. So I would look for products like, first of all, the, our UV Defense Long Lasting Protector from Code 9. That's actually a great um, product for oily skin, but also dry skin. Because it's the reason why it's good for oily skin is because they have especially formulated moisture capsules. So those moisture capsules are no, have no oil in it, they're, they're for hydration. So even for the oily skin, it'll hydrate their skin but not add any oil or, and it will not um, give any additional increase in the oil levels. So that's why it's ideal for oily skin because you could still find a way to hydrate and protect your skin without having any issues with the oil levels in your skin. And also for dry skin, because dry skin obviously it means your, your skin needs more water. And so those moisture capsules really help replenish the um, moisture levels in your skin while it helps to protect. So this is great because it also gives like a nice dewy glow because the moisture capsules like kind of give you this like watery glow. Um, it almost feels like a hydro, like it has like almost like a water feel to it. And you could even notice it from the actual product. I actually have a product here to show you. So this is the UV Defense, the long lasting protector. As I said, you see how like unlike other, other products, it has like, yeah, it's like 
there's like this like water-like texture about it, you see? It's just, it's like water and sunblock somehow, like, you know, amazing combination. And so it just like, there's nothing oily about it. I feel like there's like, there's, and it has like a nice glow, but it's like this really hydrating glow. And then of course, um, this is water-based, so you can notice the formula difference in it. And this is the daylight protection sunscreen. Now this one, you can tell it's more like a cream, see, right? But it's still, even though it's both mineral-based, like they go on really clean. There's no white cast or residue. So this is even, both of these are ideal for all skin types. And it's gonna give you great protection, but without any oily feeling. So it's safe for even oily skin, combination skin. These are like, really, it's like, a, it's like the best sunscreens ever. <laughs> So I got another question, um, what is good for um, sunburns? Okay, so I was talking about, I talked about um, sunscreen, so that's before sun care, right? So before you got into sun, how are we going to protect? But I told you that um, people also tend to forget about after sun care. And I know there's not a lot of products that are mainly geared for after sun care. Um, so, but it doesn't mean that that part should be neglected. Um, you could still do plenty of um, after sun care to take care of your skin after sun exposure with great um, skincare products. So I kind of like put together a couple, like a lot of products that you can use for not just sun blocking, but also for throughout the day and plus after, what you're gonna do afterwards, um, your sun hair. So these products, this is the H2 Dermadeca Serum Spray. This has Centella Acetica in it, so it has like a repairing um, property, that ingredient. Along with them, um, it's a hydrogen rich formula base. So this is great because as I said, throughout the day, especially when you're at the beach, you don't want your face to be cooking. You want to keep it constantly, try to keep it at a minimum um, temperature increase. So even throughout the day, I always tell people carry around like serum sprays or mists like this and sporadically kind of like spray yourself just to give it that refreshing, like cool down. It's like you drinking a cold beverage or a lemonade, an iced tea or something, um, you know, like during a really, really hot day to cool, cool down your body and to quench your thirst. You have to do the same for your skin. So I always tell people to take around a mist or spray like this. This also comes in the... Um, Go to energy serum spray so this one actually um, it helps like um, it helps lift like revitalize your skin versus this is hydrating and um, repairing properties so both of these are great because they both are like a water-based serum so that really helps cool down your skin so I always tell people to take this around if you are the type of person who gets severely oily skin and um, I would recommend this Steven Clear Pore Mist. This is an interesting um, formula and it mixes like a powder and a water formula. So the water formula has like tea tree oil, like um, a lot of acne and um, oil fighting ingredients. And then it's mixed with this uh, powder formula to keep your skin at a nice um, neutral matte finish, as well as it has that um, formula, the water-based formula that's like acne and oil fighting. So it'll keep your oil levels in control as well. So this is another thing I tell people to keep in their, people who have oily skin to keep in their, um, in their purses or stuff when they're traveling in the summertime. So these are during the day products that I feel like you should use. And it's so easy, it's just a spritz. And um, it's like that person who asked me, um, the one of our viewers who asked me about the um, whole concept of like, oh, how do I apply sunscreen while I wake up? Like this type of stuff, product, you don't have to worry about um, reapplication even on top of makeup, so it's great. And um, so for sunburns, sunburns, um, your skin's inflamed. So, and even though physically you're not in pain, your skin, when it gets exposed to sun, even when you get color, that means your skin's pretty much cooked. It's like cooking a toast, you know? Yeah, like it's not burnt, but you know when it gets toasty, you know that it's still, it got cooked. So it's the same concept. So it means that damage has happened and um, that's why your skin got darker because that actually is a sign of damage. Your skin getting tanner is a sign of damage. 
And so what I like to do for those is um, I always like to keep a sheet mask, especially for my face. Um, I always like to keep sheet masks like this in the freezer. <laughs> so or the freezer or the fridge. And I like to keep these cool. And I usually like to get the um, hyaluronic acid based ones, ones with um, a lot of abundant hyaluronic acid so, like um, ingredient in it because that's pure moisture there. So um, I like to put these in the fridge. So when I come back from the beach um, and you know, you get really tired in the sun, I like to just take these out from the fridge and I just like to slap it on and just call it a day. You know, and they're easy. So it instantly helps um, because when your skin gets sunburned, it's all it's also means that like, you know, when you burn things, they get dry, right? It means that you lost moisture and you need to replenish that moisture. And you also need to cool it down to calm it down. Cause like half the reason why it's burning and it's like it's irritating and it doesn't feel like it's kind of painful is because it's the fact that it's inflamed. So you kind of have to soothe that inflammation down. And the best way to do that is some type of cold compress. Um, or ingredients that have soothing qualities and cooling qual qualities. So I like to use sheet masks, and I also like to use um, this. I keep it in the fridge. So the Glacial Magic Pore Gel. It's almost like water. It's like almost like you're keeping a bottle of water. But I like to keep this in the fridge so that when I come back, I sometimes just put this all over my face and my body. And it has like gr it has like this amazing formula for like pore refining. So it's great for people who also have pore concerns. So once you're in the sun, your pores also stretch out. So you wanna shrink those back because you know, it's almost like when you're jumping from really hot water to cold water, it's also to shrink your pores and tighten and, and firm that skin. Um, this does a great, um, this does a great job for that. And it has really moisturizing and refreshing moisture. So I like to keep this in the fridge. This is almost like my skin's bottle of water after my runs along, you know, outside on the highways and stuff. So after that, I just cool off with that and just kind of shrinks everything back into place. <laughs> so it's great. Um, also, I got a question about um, Neogen. You went to support to buy the sunscreen and it was only online. And it, online, it doesn't say that. Um, actually, yeah, so far right now, this is only being carried on Sephora online. Um, we would love to be able to offer it to you guys in the stores, but unfortunately, um, that's not up to us. Sadly. But um, we know that it's a super popular product, and I know because um, I see people talking about it more and more every week. And um, but unfortunately, right now you can only. Uh, they, sorry, we're having problems with the connection. Unfortunately, right now, you can only purchase through Sephora online. So bear with us, and if you really want it for now, please just purchase it on um, Sephora online. Um, so I got another, somebody, somebody lives in Miami. Oh, yeah, so you live in Miami. Miami. Oh, okay. So yeah, right now, that's the only way you can get it Sephora on, online. Although, you know, it kind of makes sense for Sephora to kind of maybe regionally start carrying it in more of those sun prone cities like sunny Miami. I love Miami, by the way. I love it. My best friend actually lives in Miami. <laughs> so another great one is that um, I know that another big problem that occurs is the um, people who have sensitive, like really delicate skin, they always, they also have a problem with um, hyperpigmentation in the, from the sun damage. Um, one of my interns, she actually told, told me she puts on SPF 50 every day and she still gets pigment damage. And so, and, and then she gets oily skin during the summer. She said, how am I going to, like, what's the solution for this? And I told her, um, try this, like, water-based moisturizer, white sparkling cream. And these have, like, moisture capsules and brightening capsules in it, made from, like, white flour, natural ingredients that have brightening um, properties to it. And so since it's water-based, it's okay for even oily skin types. And then the moisture capsules in it do a brightening and clarifying to kind of like uh, prevent any pigment damage. So this actually helps to maintain like bright and clear complexion while still moisturizing your face. Um, any tips for sun care? So as I said, um, keep your face cool. Stay cool, stay cool, stay cool. <laughs> that's my tip for sun care. And that's why I'm um, showing you all these things because you just need to make sure that 
when you get in the sun, not only are you protecting yourself, but you bring that temperature back down to its normal level. That's really, sun is not just damaging because of the sun rays, but it's damaging because your, your skin temperature rises. And when your skin temperature rises even 0 0.01 degree, it's gonna start ex rapidly accelerating in aging. And um, it's gonna really also wick all that moisture away faster too. So really, it's, it's about sun protection and staying cool. So do whatever you can to calm your skin down and bring it down to a cool level, back to like if it gets heated. That's really my sun tip, sun care tip. Um, so I would always like to recommend like having something like this in the fridge and also having a couple of masks stuck in the fridge. Masks are so great. I mean, these are like pre-packaged, like you don't need to worry about like taking up a lot of space in your fridge. Like it's, it's great. I mean, you, and also not only that, you don't have to use it. Even when you don't use it, um, when it's ke um, kept cold, it's still as effective. It's just that when, when it's like cold, it feels better because it quickly almost is, acts like an ice pack to your skin. That's why I like it. I'm saying this is an additional inside tip that I use but you don't always have to have it unrefrigerated. You can still carry it around and stick it in your luggage, stick it anywhere you want, and just have it readily available anywhere. So really, these masks are ideal, and you know, they're, they're leak proof. You carry it on planes, you can even slap it onto the plane and just call it a day and just fall asleep. Um, and also these water-based moisturizers, I think, are great. Because like, you have bottles of water in your fridge, it's the same concept, you have bottles of skincare <laughs> in your um, fridge for your skin and cooling down that skin. And also just also during the day maintenance for your skin to keep it cool during the day, I always recommend serum sprays and this. And also um, I've been receiving a lot of questions about acne and everything and I kind of wanted to tie it briefly, a little bit of it in to sun care because I know part of the sun care is that people also tend to start breaking out more in the summertime. And so, um, I just wanted to, we have this um, Canadian clay pore mask, pore cleanser, and these, these are great. They use like a Canadian glacial soil clay, which has all these like detoxing, like um, dirt and purity absorbing benefits. And it also carbonates upon like oxygen, like hitting the oxygen. And so this is actually great because it's supposed to suck all that extra oil in and stuff out. And I, especially during the summer when you're producing more sebum and oil, I think it's great because um, at once a week, this could really just maintain a very clear pores for you and prevent any breakouts. And also sunblock ingredients tend to be a little more stubborn. So this is a great way to ensure that your sunblock gets washed off like thoroughly from like even the deepest parts of your pores. So this was a this is like just a brief thing I wanted to mention in the cleansing aspect for the summertime. And then um, I also got a lot of questions about repeat and I wanted to tie it into the sun before sun and uh, before and after sun care because the repeat products I think are really ideal because a lot of the repeat product ingredients include a lot of calming, soothing, and like antibacterial and anti-inflammation uh, natural ingredients which is ideal because your sun is constantly irritated from the, uh, your skin is always irritated from the sun. So it's really cool because you, it's really ideal to have those cooling, calming, and soothing um, benefit uh, products. So as I said, the organic cotton tree and toning pad, people always forget the importance of toning at the end of the day, but it's really crucial because you're not really achieving full effect of products when your skin's like, going crazy you know your skin has to be at a good temperature to uh, a, a good um good environment to accept these like great ingredients into the skin you know and so when it's out of balance you're not really you're not really achieving and absorbing the full effect of what the ingredients are supposed to do from the skincare so please you just have to tone and these have like naturally soothing and i said dual texture soothing calming cooling ingredients like calendula chamomile. So this is great to use as a toner at the end of the day, but also to calm that skin back down to its normal level and cool it down. So this is great. And it also gives that like very subtle, small, like gentle exfoliation through your everyday toning regimen and routine. So that's a great one. And I also have, this is the um, 
the BioFresh mask I was talking about earlier. So this is good for people who have the skin that gets spread easily and rosacea. And then also you see those little flakes of real hand crushed herbs in it. That's gonna do a great job in giving you that gentle, subtle, everyday exfoliation. So this was a great, this is a great one that I recommend. And then um, the moist gel oil, this is great because I chose this to after, after, as an after sun care product because as you can tell, people try to hesitate moisturizing in the summer because their skin gets oily. This is a phenomenal, innovative formula type that it's like a gel oil. So it has a hydrating, um, rich, concentrated like uh, effects and benefits of almost like an oil, but it's a gel. Like it feels like a gel, meaning that it won't leave your skin greasy or oily and it's gonna just like absorb very fresh, clean light. See, it's really nice. You don't get that oily. So it's a good way to hydrate and moisturize and not be afraid of breakouts while you're moisturizing. I also got some, another question about, um, you can't find our products in Greece. Um, I think you're actually gonna be able to find it, I don't know specifically in Greece, but, um, Stay tuned, um, we are working, we are fully expanding. We are actually um, expecting to expand to major retailers in, in the UK, as well as you know parts of Eastern Europe, and like Germany, and like at um, retail, beauty retail chains in those countries. Um, but uh, right now, I don't think, I don't, Think we are specifically in Greece yet, but I'm sure that um, that a lot of these retailers that we're launching into, like the department stores, we're actually launching in the summer. We're going to be launching into Selfridges in the UK, so that's very exciting. And I'm sure they they I've shopped from them from the US, and I know they ship worldwide. So I'm sure they ship to Greece. So you can definitely start grabbing our stuff from them as well, because they're they have well set up um, online shopping e-commerce system and um, so I think that's great for like all the rest of Europe you guys could um, definitely purchase our stuff through online and it could be now available to you guys through their e-commerce platform so we're really excited about that but other than that we're also launching into other major beauty retailers all across Europe so we'll keep you posted on that with more details um, I can't tell you exactly um, I'm, there's a lot of countries in Europe. I can't tell. I'm, I'm not going to guarantee like I we're going to be in every single like a store in every single um, country in Europe. But we are going to be available throughout most of Europe or even through these um, European retailers through their online e-commerce platforms. So. Oh, you like me? Yes, thank you. <laughs> they're um, actually they're a Forever 21 nail polish. <laughs> They actually did a good job on their nail polishes. <laughs> so um, anyhow, so these are some of the, um, I just want to really rep, like um, introduce repeat in this section because I feel like a lot of people ask me about repeat, but there's not as much. Um, it's one of those uh, brands that like a lot of people know about, but um, it's not as much like talked about as much as Neogen Dermology and Neogen Code 9. So I wanted to take this time to kind of like explain more about repeat. Um, and just briefly to um, just mention, Reapy, I think it's really ideal in general for people with the most sensitive skin because these formulas are just all natural, like very, very gentle on your skin and they really concentrate it in incorporating, because even though you don't feel like your skin was um, irritated throughout the day, the truth is like we're around a lot of pollution and environmental like um, damage all the time. So your skin, is there to protect all the organs inside your body. So your skin, that's its purpose. It's supposed to be like a shield. But in general, that doesn't mean just because I don't feel like, um, like I'm not bleeding, I'm not like, you know, breaking out. That doesn't mean my skin's not compromised. My skin is still getting compromised throughout the day. So I think regardless of whether you feel it or not, it's important at the end of the day to kind of bring your skin back to its normal balance and to a a nice equilibrium um, and I think the repeat products because of the ingredients they try to like it's consistent like most of the products throughout the whole collection have um, try to incorporate a lot of soothing and balancing ingredients that are going to bring like kind of like that normal healthy balance back to your skin so I think that's really important so um, in general I, I think that 
three-piece formula is really, especially in nowadays with all this pollution happening, I think that repeat products are really ideal, kind of like essentials um, that a lot of people should incorporate into their skincare routines. And not only that, it's like the packaging and everything from it is mostly all recyclable. So I think that um, it really also kind of um, every day requires and forces us to kind of get involved in um, eco-friendly uh, lifestyles. So just by using this product, like, you know, a lot of the products have more than one function to it. This has a subtle exfoliation effect plus a toning effect to it. And I feel like by combining like multiple functions in one, it provides elimination, uh, elimination of like um, extra waste because versus two products, you have one product. And also it just also conserves time. You know, everybody has a busy lifestyle. And so I think in that aspect is just engaging in a repeat um, skincare routine. It really just kind of automatically kind of sets us up in a habit routine of engaging and doing something that's kind of that's going to be benefiting in a very sustainable and eco-friendly way. And I think that's very important. And so like these are some uh, products like I don't know if you guys have other questions about after sun care. I just gave you some tips I had and like you know things I do extra um, like the refrigerating the stuff and I think these are really great um, easy ways that you don't really have to spend a lot of money on you could buy these sheet masks the fiber sheet masks so we have four different types of these and depending on what your skin type is and what kind of replen replenishment you need um, I think it's great great to stock up on and keep it in your fridge for the summertime and it's nice to do like it's kind of like you're kind of treating yourself at the end of the day it's really nice you can pamper yourself kind of like a little bit of me time and not only that you can even like if you're going on a vacation or whatever you can just pack these and your girlfriends that you guys could like after the beach you guys could totally just sit around and do this like at the end of the day it's really nice um, it's also Mother's Day soon, and these are really ideal. Moms love masks. Like, I swear, like, my mom is, I mean, she's gorgeous, okay? She's my mother. I think she's beautiful. But, um, I sometimes, she's like, she tells me, like, oh my god, it's annoying. Like, even moms, like, find it sometimes annoying to do extra skincare routines. And so my mom actually, like, she loves masks because all you need to do is just rip it open, put it on, and then just kind of, like, sit there and watch TV. And then, like, after 15, 20 minutes, you just, like, take it off. So, like, um, I think this is a great Mother's Day gift. I know that, like, when I gift it to my grandma or my mom, they absolutely love it. And um, these are, like, great, great prices as well because, like, you can get, like, different kinds because you, your skin always acts differently and you don't know what your mom really what she wants to focus on. So then if you don't really know that, it's a great way because you grab like a couple of each different types and then it'd be the perfect gift. Like your mom can pick and choose which one she wants to use. So I think it's great. So I think this is a great Mother's Day gift. And there's like, um, you know, it's such an easy to use task. And you can also enjoy it with your grandma and your mom, like on Mother's Day. It could be like a Mother's Day ritual. So I think this is a great um, concept. So these are like my recommendations for before and after sun care and it was about the sunscreens which is of course the things you need to apply before to protect your skin from the sun and also throughout the day products that you carry in your bag to keep your skin like um, cooled down and uh, in a you know not getting all crazy your skin you know needs to stay at a stable like balanced condition and I think these are great um, throughout the day spritz skincare that you could just like spritz on to cool down and so these are great and also these are like the oily skin compatible products or people who have like dark and sunken skin complexions or they get um, easily get hyper pick like some kind of pigmentation damage easily these are great so these are great um, water-based moisturizers and then also I explained to you other things like people who tend to get inf very inflamed and red in skin like rosacea or whatever. These are great. These two products are great for your summer skincare routine after the sun because um, rosacea is caused by inflammation. So anything that, tr anything that provokes even more inflammation like sun or heat exposure, you know, it's just it's going to be even worse for people who do suffer from rosacea or easily reddening skin. So 
these two products, any products with ingredients that have calming and soothing anti-inflammation benefits to it are great. And then of course I have like people who are like very acne prone and some products they can use to ensure and keep that um, breakout and prevent that breakout and keep it under control. As well as, um, you know, people are afraid to hydrate in the summer because their skin gets oily. These are great moisturizing products that you don't have to worry about those things. So these are just like before and after sun care. Um, also, you guys should check out our YouTube on um, Skin Talk. That's where I actually explain, um, I do videos. I did a fun video on SPF. And so some of the stuff I briefly talked about in the beginning, I did um, I did a whole like video on that about the SPF strength, the spectrum coverage, purpose, and intended area of use. I did it at like a local like pharmacies because I know that that's where everybody just goes to look for their sunscreen. So you guys could also look at that again. Um, so I broke down all those uh, main major points. Like this live is more like a free like I'm like talking to you guys and answering your questions. So it could kind of like bounce here and there. It could be like kind of like all over the place. But that one, um, if you go to our Skin Talks, we have like specialized videos on my advice for certain specific concerns. Um, also, I, um, so I think that um, that's, I had a lot of questions and we had a lot of questions about other products too. So I was busy answering that, but always check out our YouTube. Our YouTube is gonna have um, specific, specific skin concerns that I give advice on and in the skin talk section. It also has on product spotlights where we actually talk about specific products. So you guys can always check back on that. And um, I'm sorry if this kind of went on. I just was receiving a lot of questions like from here and there, but I'm trying my best to answer all of them. And so if you guys have any further questions about um, sun care or after sun care or specific things you guys want me to um, talk about more. I tried my best to answer all the questions as I went, but if I missed anything, please go to our um, Facebook at Neogen Derma US and um, comment and leave us a comment on any questions I might have missed and I'll try to answer it there. Okay. All right. This was Laura and this was Facebook live, Instagram live. <laughs> and I hope you guys, um, I answered as much of the questions that you guys had. And um, I'm going to see you next week. Um, and next week is going to be about um, Mother's Day um, and gift ideas. So I'm collecting a lot of information from moms and um, from all different age range moms that um, what their skin concerns are. So I'm going to talk about like great ideas for gifts that you could get your mom or your grandma. Like I'm personally really close to both my grandma and my mom. So I'm going to be talking about all kinds of moms. So, and great gifts to get them. So this is Laura, so tune in next week. Follow us on Facebook at neogenderma.us. Leave us a comment if I missed any of your questions or if you missed our live, you could watch it there or you could also use that to comment what, if any questions you had and you wanted to ask but you missed the live. So um, I'll see and check back with you next week, Thursday on Facebook Live covering Mother's Day gift ideas and ideal gifts to get your mom. All right, this is Laura, bye.